we have Sir Sean O'Malley taking on Marab. Marab did a good job of just closing in on this boy to keep constant pressure. You look at Marab, he's got good technique. That jab is up, his face is good. He's got his arm here, jab here, face is here. He's not over thinning across the board like his teammate did for Aljo or a lot of other fighters. And you saw it each time Marab would hit that takedown. It was like a fucking truck running over a baby deer. He's kissing it back. Boom, boom. Kisses him. Lets him go when the round is over. And look at Sean Amon. He goes, you son of a Gets up and whack. Whack. Hits him in the back of the head. This is going to be interesting because I feel his conditioning is going to be the X factor. What's going on, boys? Welcome back to the channel. We have another void breakdown for you. We have Sugar Sean O'Malley taking on Marab for the Bantamweight Championship of the World. This was at UFC 306 at the Sphere. And we had a new champion in Marab dethroning Sugar Sean O'Malley. We're going to break down some of the things that Marab did well and some of the things that Sugar Sean uh, did. You know, you listen to the corner man, Tim Welch. He talked about going to the body and finding him and then I believe it's the fourth or fifth round. He said, we're almost done with this. So I love to pick Tim Watch's mind to let him know, to ask him what was going through his mind. But boys, buckle up. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like, subscribe, and also hit the bell to never go live. All right, so here we are. Obviously, you can tell there's a huge height difference. Um, obviously, range different as well. But that didn't stop Marab for closing the void in on Sugar Shot and Molly. And there we have it right there. We have what is the difference. Where's that big? Here it is. Boom. So 5'11 to 5'6, 72 to 68. So obviously, Sean has the height advantage and also the reach advantage over Marab. But like I said before, that didn't stop Marab from closing the void in on Sean and getting those, I think he probably landed six to seven takedowns. Um, but it, as the fight was going on, you saw Sean um, O'Malley's coach say, you got to find him. You got to find him. And here we are right here. And this is the thing too. You look at the the, the, the position of the feet. Sean's kind of crossing his feet, so he's avoiding. So if he was to try to counter him, it's it's not gonna be as fast because his feet aren't planted. As you see Marab, he's uh, coming forward, trying to close that uh, the void on him. Man, look at the people here. Good Lord, what a sold out arena. Um, and his elevation is low. So he's staying super low. So those, some of the things that Marab can run into, is that knee up the middle because he is shorter. Um, the push kick, which we saw uh, Marab get hit with at the very end of the fight and hurt him. But Marab did a good job of just closing in on this void and keep constant pressure. So this is Marab hunting Sugar Sean O'Malley and Sean trying to create distance to give himself enough opportunity to find that one shot and to find his chin because Sean has mentioned it before. He looks for the chin. Now, price picks, we, we, we took some we took some L's. Okay, we're not gonna lie, we took some L's. I thought the main event was gonna end in a finish. Either Marab choking out or TK Owen, Sugar Sean O'Malley, or Sugar Sean O'Malley finding his sniper shot and landing that knockout. But guys, you know what? It made the event so much more fun because we have some skin in the game. And you guys can get skin in the game as well. All you gotta do is go to your app store on your phone download price picks and when you do that make sure you use my promo code mighty they have a cool promotion going on right now all you got to do is play five dollars and you're going to win fifty dollars no matter what happens in the fights in the nfl game or the hockey game or the valor game you're going to win 50 you play five dollars and make sure you guys get that free square caleb william all you got to do is go one yard and you get that free square and all you got to do is match it with another one to get that w on price pick and make sure you guys make the right pick at the right place which is price picks and here it is right here morale was pretty good about we have a mighty cast he says you know yes i did get this cut but he has to try he has to hit me he has to try to hit me i'm not going to be as easy it is to hit because morale was doing a good job of being a as i told my son this morning he played football i said be a busy bee a bee that stays stagnant doesn't bring honey back to the beehive. But a busy bee that's doing this, it's going to bring a lot more honey back to the hive. And so Marab, when he was outside the void, the void, he's being a busy, busy, uh, a busy bee. 
moving all the way so Sean couldn't find him. And Sean did have some, some good shots, but look at the reach advantage. Look at this. Okay. Here's his head. Here's his head. He's fully extended and that lands. He's fully extended and that doesn't even land. So obviously Sugar Sean and Molly have the reach advantage. And he's still got to go a little bit. And this is him obviously going back too. But he's fully extended to try to hit him. So it's not the full boom. It's just I'm fully extended to try to hit him. But there is that reach advantage that Sean O'Malley has over Marab. So obviously on the feet, I think Marab outlanded Sean. Oh, at the very end of this, we should see the uh, copy strike to see who outlanded who. But once again, this is one of the things that makes Sean so dangerous is that long reach he has in that division right here and boom here's uh sean coming forward and you see marab kind of do that check that check left hook where he's backing up he doesn't know what's going on um and that's just marab doing a good job of, of taking advantage of him coming forward with his hands down and here's marab using his uh his jab to close that Close that void in on uh, in Sean because we know Sean is either going to go. He's definitely going back. He's going to go right or left. But if you can find that right hand shot, he can hit him. But here's the thing, too. You look at Marab. He's got good technique. That jab is up. His face is good. He's got the jab. He's got his arm here. Jab here. Face is here. He's not overextending across the void like his teammate did or Aljo or a lot of other fighters. So you look at Thomas Almeida. He did the exact same thing. He reached across the void against Sugar Sean O'Malley, and that's where he found the chin and it was able to knock him out. You see Marab's chin is low. Okay, his sh Marab's shoulders are here. His chin's lower than his, um, his shoulders. So that's why his chin wasn't up, and that's why Sean couldn't, he had a hard time finding his chin. Boom. And here is the significance of the fight right here. This double leg takedown for Marab. He was timing him very well. I mean, that's a full blast double. And this is one of the things I tell my kids and the students that I train at Grapple Club. So how do you defend a blast double like this, right? Especially since Marab was in there deep. The, the hips have been penetrated. Sean's weight's going to go this way over his belly, and Sean's hips have been broken. The best thing you can do is take this hand and put Marav's face inside your stomach. Because when he's out here behind you right here, he has advantage. His shoulder is on you. You pull the head in front of you, and you get it like this. Boom. Now you have done it. Now it's easier said than done. You got to do it at a fast pace. It's a, it's a reaction. You throw the head in front of your stomach, and then that's going to help defend a little bit of the takedown but beautiful timing from Marab. the head's in the right place he's got the the, the uh the legs so now he can't do anything and all Marab has to do if sean starts defending is step deep over here and push his head that way and now he has his leg blocked so sean has no post the only post that he does have is going to be this hand right here which is going to have the post on that side but Marab's going to win that because he has two of the posts of the table broken. So good job, Marab, of running through in this double leg takedown. And you saw it each time Marab would hit that takedown. It was like a fucking truck running over a baby deer. Like it was just boom. Let us continue on these slides. Shout out to Michael Wandrover and Nick Pappas for getting you guys that video. The instant reaction. Okay, now boom. Now Marab is... It, it, is very strong here. He did this to Henry Cejudo. He does this to everybody. Uh, you know, after watching Marab fight multiple times to break down his fights, it's the same style of fighting implemented on all his opponents. So right here you have Sean. Here's his head. Here's his head. It's a big void. And so right now he doesn't have to worry about this hook. This is a brother fight hook. This hook is being smashed. You see his knee pushing in on the hip. So he's trying to pass and he's keeping his head up and there's Sean looking at him. Um, and this is where Marab beats people up. You know, it's not that Marab, he beats you up physically, but he also beats you, beats you up mentally because it's a constant, constant struggle to get him off you. And right here, I find this hilarious. Marab is not worried about it because his posture is good. 
This is the key that's keeping um, him safe is the posture. He's smiling at the crowd. Um, Sean doesn't have Sean does have a Uma Plata, but it's coming off. He doesn't have the shorter locked in place. It looks like the elbow is going to be out of there as well. And now Sean's hips are off the mat. And so Sean can't really put a lot of weight. Sean could put a little weight on him, but he's coming up. So right now, Marab has to, uh, he has a partner in this fight and it's called gravity because gravity's constantly pulling Sean's hips down. So he's pulling himself up. He's looking at pass guard and I believe he does pass guard and he also has his hand on this foot as well. When Sean is just ha hanging on, trying to keep his posture down, but this is what beats this move. This position right here is great posture, but that smile, this is what makes everybody loves this guy. He's just having a great time. Boom. Now. Here's a big thing in the fight that a lot of people don't realize. When you have this, right? And we saw Marab have this. Sean is on this leg's the closest one to me. So it's even, it's even, it's not worse, but it's, it can be worse. So now this, this leg is not being flexed. And each time Marab would need this leg, I said it earlier today, it's like taking a leg kick straight to the thigh that isn't flexed, right? There's two ways to defend a leg kick. One, you can check, check. Two, you can mm, step into it and eat it. Like flex your calf. Like here's my bicep right now. It's not flex. It's flex. If I get hit like this, this is Sean O'Malley's leg right now. Cause there's no weight on it, right? It gets hit. Boom. That hurts. But if I check the kick, I check it. Let's say right when he right when he he hits, I go, boom, I flex the muscle. It's going to take some of that absorption off because the muscles flex. It's, 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 it's more of a, a solid, a solid muscle right here. Sean can't flex his, his, his quadricep each time or his thigh or his it band or his that band because his leg is up. So there's no weight on this leg. All his weight is right here and here. So each time, uh, Marabba land those knees directly to that thigh, that is like a leg kick being hit in soft tissue. So good job, Marab. But a lot of people are like, oh, he's just kneeing the knee and the, the thigh, kneeing the thigh. Please ask your mother or your or your or your wife or your girlfriend to knee you in the thigh over and over and over while standing. And then say, okay, now I'm gonna lift my leg up. I want you to knee the exact same thigh in the same area while my leg's off the ground. And let me know how it feels. Comment in the section below and let me know. If you don't want your girlfriend to do it, then do it to your girlfriend. Let's continue. But it's like a dead leg every single time to that leg when it's being raised up. And right here. Now here's now here's a good <laughs> he fucking <laughs> let's go to back up. So once again, we've seen Marab get in this position with Henry Cejudo. He was in this position with Henry Cejudo, and he was able to have a conversation with Mark Zuckerberg. Now we see him do it to Sugar Sean O'Malley. He does it, he's kissing the back, boom, boom, kisses him. Let's him go when the round is over and look at Sean Amati. He goes, you son of a bitch. Gets up and whack, whack. Hits him in the back of the head. Now let's do it. Kisses him. And this is just showboating right here. He's showboating and letting him know like, dude, like he's having fun. And Sean's having a hard time dealing with this constant pressure. And Sean protects himself at all times. Gets in the back of the head, hits him. Now, the this is the reason why it's hard to find his chin. Now, this is a great shot from Sean. Because he's trying to aim it not to back of the head, but he's throwing it over and right. Marab is trying to go away. He gets his hand up and he can't hit because the shoulder is in the way. So it takes some brunt off it. And even then, he's trying to hit Sugar Sean and Molly. So they're both kind of going this way. Sean's going this way. So there's no sting on this shot because Sean's weight's going that way. But this is how Marab is evading the shot he's going away from. He's not going into it and he's hiding his chin. So good job on Marab. Uh, hiding his chin in this exchange. Okay, now boom. This is the money shot that Sean was looking for. And he found it. He found it. And look where Marab is. He eats it clean right on the face. And we all knew Marab was going to get hit in order to get to Sean O'Malley because... You have the wrestler who needs to get to the striker and the striker who needs to find his, his his target to knock him out. And there's a beautiful shot from Sugar Sean O'Malley. Perfect technique. Hand is down. 
hand is up the the transfer hand the the hand that uh hand transfer whack right there that way if he was to throw overhand right that hand would block it his face is good perfect technique from sean o'malley right here if you head here boom you know the shoulders the back the hips boom going right in there and Marab ate it that's perfect technique from sean Marab's just so fucking tough that he's able to eat it and keep pushing forward and it's kind of demoralizing a little bit right like you hit this guy with your best shot right there and he still comes forward but they call him the machine baby boom and then there is Marab. you know i'm not sure if this shot landed um but look at, at the body position and the reason why i like to stop this by still by still is because matt hume when i will get ready for my fights he would do this to me he was like when you get to a certain position the person is going to be running he's going to have his hands down and here's sean and date and dating trying to get away from amali going that way going lateral and here is marab crossing that void he's in it now marab is in a position ready to fight if sean was to shoot he's ready to fight if sean was to exchange he's going to get his hands back up and if marab was to throw a left hook and he was at the right distance he would land that but i'm sure sean O'Malley got out fast enough and he wasn't able to follow up but i always like to look at it and say who's in the body position who's in a position to fight if you go back and look at conor mcgregor when he fought Jose Aldo and when john mccarthy pushed him off conor mcgregor was like i'll send a position to fight because i'll scoot myself back so i was ready to snap his head but beautiful uh right hand from marab whether it landed or not he closed the void and take any damage whatsoever and he forces sean out of his position on to the next deal all right here this is where marab had him against the cage let's go and now anything that Mar anything that sean has to do he has to look up and throw everything right or left hand or, or, or left hook but these are free shots from marab i think he landed maybe 10 or 15. sean amali's looking down he can't see so he's pretty much blinded marab got to pick his shots and typically this is somebody who's you know this guy, gentleman is frustrated and he's trying to figure out what can he do now he could shoot for a double leg but that's a whole another fight that he probably doesn't want to have or he can come in and clinch inside ties pull the head down step deep pull the head off like fight in that realm sean was so content with trying to find his chin instead of forcing the fight in the clinch or the wrestling's gonna be a harder fight but the clinch and moving and forcing the fight on the feet and not worry about the takedown but I don't know if Sean had any injuries anything like that it's easier said than done but it's something I've had to deal with being a shorter fighter and fighting people who want to wrestle me like Ali Ali Bagratinov was one of those guys okay here we go again now Marab this is one of his signature moves he gets you to the cage presses you up there's no void there's no there is no void and uh, once again Marab has a teammate this team is called the cage the cage is keeping Sean right here so he can't go anywhere and you have this right here he's pushing him against him and then now he's able to land those knees to the body and not giving Sean my opportunity to get out of that way but this is he's done this to Peter Yan he's done this to Jose Aldo he's done it to Henry Cejudo everybody and there's another beautiful technique once again this is a, his only post he has he's got that post he's got that post and then he has this post but if he turns down here and posts there sean turtles and then rob gets his back so but i think he gets taken out and i think o'malley uh, crawls his way to the cage to be able to give himself something to get off i'm not a fan of using the cage to get up but everybody's different but beautiful takedown time perfectly from marab once again he gets his back and one of the things you see Marab do, he he wrestles. He gets the back, puts all his weight here, down, and forces Sean O'Malley to put his hands on, on the mat. And then you don't see him jumping on the back, putting the hooks in, body triangle right here. He looks just to neutralize the, his opponent against the cage. And once he gets there, then he's able to work and beat him up and just drain drain him of his energy. But, I mean, he, th he does this on all his fights, and it's it's amazing and here he is side control yeah i believe side control there's his hips right there side control deep underhook now sean o'malley has to fight for this underhook he's got to bring this in swim push this as a frame get a knee shield in there because he's in half guard 
a knee shield and you play this game you create a void between you and him head to head head to head and then you can decide if he's going to try to hit you you hit him back if he pushes forward you go underneath to go to the legs it's, it, it's a game you have to play you have to create a guard from your back that's one of the things i learned from mikey misimichi when i was in vegas when i was training for worlds and then there he is about to pass guard he's throwing a punch boom he kicks he's got his hand there he's gonna pass that by he's gonna be a free guard pass so he's punching the pass and getting a reaction out of sean o'malley because that punch isn't designed to knock him out it's designed to him to put his hands up so he can't frame on him when he passes boom and i believe that was the end of the fight marab knew he did enough to win that fight i think sure sean o'malley and his coach tim welch knew uh they lost that fight because it was too much and here we go here is the strikes in the fight now look marab outlanded the striker of the division granted sugar sean o'malley he is a sniper but he wouldn't have the opportunity to find a chin and here is marab marab was just all over him like right on rice um he threw 164 significant strikes landed 82 to sean o'malley's 89 and sean only landed 47 so he almost landed more than his total strikes he threw the whole entire fight but this deciding factor of this fight was this right here he tried to take him down 15 times and he landed six where sean tried to take him down zero times zero times excuse me so when you look at this this is one person utilizing one side of mixed martial arts which is just striking we have this gentleman he utilized the whole you know thing of mixed martial arts which is this one, I'll put an X here because this one only used one tool to build the house to where Marab used all tools. tools. He used the striking. He used the, the wrestling. Even though he only landed six, he attempted 15 times. So 40%. And he controlled him with the jiu-jitsu for 10 minutes. So that's, uh, you know, you look at that. That's uh, pretty much the story of the fight. And somebody had it. 47 48. 47 48. What? I'm very curious what they saw there. Like, what rounds was it? I, I had the fight score of like this. That's how I had it. Um, I felt there were some good moments in the rounds where Sean did well, but I didn't think it was warranted enough to win the round. That's just my opinion. Okay, let's go to the next slide but 49 49 47 48 and 47 48 it's very interesting and, and you know that's sean o'malley you know but here's the thing he's healthy he's got a lot of money he's still super popular um i'm still a fan of him and his brand nothing's gonna change this guy is he's wealthy he's got a farm he's got a beautiful wife beautiful daughter he's good to go right like it's a great fight great learning experience and now he's gonna go back to the drawing board and work on the things he can and there is marab you know guy on a 10 fight win streak in the ufc and this is the thing me and my my producer made a comment today and he goes dude it's so crazy you know we we saw diego, diego lopez versus brian ortega and we saw what alex volkanovsky said and alex volkanovsky alex volkanovsky said you know my next fight is going to be for a title and then somebody chimed in and goes dude the guy's on a two fight losing streak diego lopez is warranted more title shot than alex volkanovsky doesn't matter how popular you popular you are it's about how much rubber you're putting to the fucking to the to, to the tread right you got to put the rubber to the to the road to earn it but you know to bring back the full context this guy had a 10 fight one streak in order to get this opportunity to wear ufc gold so as you could tell the static on his face is absolutely warranted congrats to marab and i'm super excited to see what he does in his title run as the champion at 135 in the UFC. And obviously, you know, they already know who's next in line is Umar Nagamedov, this guy right here, the brown, the brown, I don't know how to say it. I'm going to try to uh, murder the brown hairdress versus the white hairdress. I think it's called Paprika. I, I, I don't know what it's called, but I don't want those guys to kick my ass. But this is going to be interesting because I feel his conditioning is going to be the X factor because we know he's not going to stop. He's going to be a busy bee around the, 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 you know, the octagon to where this gentleman has the high kicks. He's very long. He's very big. And he also has 
the wrestling, but he does not have the work ethic like this man. I'm not saying he doesn't have the work ethic. Work ethic. He doesn't have just that. I'm coming to smash you. I'm coming to smother you, like Khabib. This man has that 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 bear gene where he just comes and gets you, where he's more strategic. I'm not saying he's not, but it will be an interesting matchup. I'm excited to see see it. Hopefully, they give Marab at least six six months to just enjoy being a champion and then they can run it but if it's like three to four months i hope they don't do it if they do i hope marab doesn't accept it and i hope he just enjoys being a champion for a little bit 10 fight win streak boys 10 fights she boys if you enjoyed this breakdown please leave a like subscribe and also hit the bell to know we go live see you at the next one